Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. It's that time again, and we're on our marks, set and ready to go with topical issues to trash out. Welcome to The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. And as you know, there is never a dull moment on The Advocate. I'll be hitting the tracks by crusading for our looted funds to be returned back to the country, which could be some form of amnesty. Rukewe, our women rights advocate, joins us virtually and she speaks on the recently distributed COVID-19 vaccines. She's asking, which way Nigeria? Our first lady, Treasure, we'll be talking about fixing our politics. Evans is definitely shaking tables as he speaks on the Nigerian woman. Are they safe? We'll find out in his advocacy. And lastly, our seasoned journalist, Jumoke, as always, uh, she's asking, should we sell our Sorok? In fact, who collects rent money for our Sorok? Now, wow. I can't wait to hear this particular one. Nigeria, my beloved country. We'll be back in a moment. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Let them bring the money. Now, this is going to be very controversial. But then my preference is not to run away from controversies but to confront them. If it doesn't lead us in the direction of what we should do, it may at least make us understand what we should not contemplate doing. And I speak on a suggestion for a government program to persuade Nigerians who took our money to voluntarily bring some of those monies back to the country as some form of restitution in return for amnesty. Aha, you see now why it is controversial. It's like I'm asking for us to take some steps that will encourage citizens to steal our money and then bring it back home in return for forgiveness while they go enjoy the rest of the loot peacefully. Well, I if that is not what we already do in a more convoluted and grossly inefficient manner. The suggestion indeed raised a strong moral question. But rather than run away from that question, we should confront it. According to a Chatham House report in 2019, an estimated $582 billion has been stolen from Nigerians since independence. In today's money, that comes to about $4 trillion every year. To put that in context, and rather simplistically, I must say the capital expenditure budget for this year is $2.47 trillion. At 50% funding, we'll be lucky to close with 1.5 trillion performance. Meanwhile, some people are taking 4 trillion out of the system. So while the entire nation grapples with 1.5 trillion borrowed money to fund capital expenditure, 
a handful of Nigeria, Nigerians take four trillion away every year. We have been on the prosecution of Maina for about seven years. We don't know when that prosecution will end, if it will end. We have been speaking about the extradition of a former minister of petroleum for the past five years. Nasuki Gate is still in court. The former head of service case is still in court. And so are many corruption cases that have been in the court since OBJ days. When will they be concluded? At what cost? What will be the eventual judgment? If found guilty, and that is a big if, by the way, what will eventually be the judgment? And how much of the loot are we likely to be able to recover after 10 to 20 years of prosecution? This is what makes me think there may indeed be a case to review our approach to the issue of recovering funds already looted from us. At the current state of our system, I am not sure we have the capacity to bring a citizen who stole correct money to justice. Just take a look at the past four decades, and the answer is there blowing in the wind. What did you see? Okay, what about monies that have not been looted yet? Again, drawing from the Chatham House report, we can increase our capital expenditure by $4 trillion in real cash terms annually without borrowing by simply blocking the looting of our commonwealth. Thus, the focus of our anti-corruption policy must shift from catching them after they have taken the money and then prosecuting them for the next decade. Rather, we must prevent them from being able to steal. My advocacy. We need to revisit our approach to getting back our bought looted funds. And we should not be averse to unconventional ways including some form of amnesty, as part of the pool of opinions. On the other side, we should dedicate 80% of our corruption fight to prevention and only 20% to catching and prosecuting looters for decades. Our current approach is not working. Prevention, keyword, prevention. Mm. So add to your list, <coughs> and maybe we should also involve deities. Yeah. If, if, if we yeah, can. Because you, you, talk about, you talk about us not running away from unconventional means. So why don't we involve traditional <laughs> practice <laughs> or using some of the deities to recover these funds? If you or work. applying spiritism. Since physical operation <laughs> is failing us. I'm just uh, that's, that's a weird one. You, you, you know Metu's case has been sent back for a trial, for yes. example. After five years in the court process, retire will start. Maybe after retrial, we will go to appeal. After appeal again, we'll go to Supreme Court. When will it end? No, uh, How much money will when, be left by the time it ends? When they a lot of times, is just to abandon the case. Because I remember... Um, Senator Ojikalu, his case was also sent for retrial. Is he being trialed again? His own case is even worse. He spent 13 years in the court system. <laughs> Before he was awarded 14 years and then sent out, you know. Okay, so what this present administration sold us during election was that they, they were going to rid the country of corruption. But have we really truly seen this happen? I recall that at some point last week, I asked myself, the way this country is going a borrowing, it doesn't look like three generations after us will be able to pay up. Okay, so this is a country that the same Okonjo Iwala, who's been celebrated globally, works for under OBJ and under Jonathan, right? Yeah. Yes. And they had paid up all our debts. Yes, sir. Now we're back as debtors. Yes. And all the people who looted us See, we have been looted yes. as a and, people. And, and, and re-looted. Yes. And re-looted as a people. Yes. Are there, are just there. lounging mm. every day. Taking sure. new positions, sitting in the Senate, it's, sitting everywhere. Rukewe. It's very interesting. I liked uh, what Bola has said. Prevention is actually much cheaper than cure. And we haven't really done anything to do anything in prevention in, in, our, in our looting system, if you will. Like you said, the politicians, they're recycled and there's no real justice. Even when they, they are caught and red-handed, they have lawyers, they keep going to court and the system just, um, it's crazy. Now, um, I know that they try to seize assets and even the asset seizing people 
even they're now looters apparently i heard you know magu is already um, being prosecuted as well so who is checking where is the check in the system buhari ran on corruption anti-corruption and um it's actually it's been said that probably this is the most corrupt of all the governments that have, have because everything is really really um, abysmal nothing is working in nigeria and of course all the monies that are brought they've not been brought back and if they were we haven't seen it and you get talking four trillion you know <laughs> these amounts are staggering but anyway yes. we need to find a system independent system not necessarily from the government like the other time we talked in the advocate we have chartered accountants, accounting firms that can trace the money, that can plug the leakages in the in the civil service, in all forms of government, there's leakages every day in the hospitals, in in, in the what's it called, in the in the school systems, the school board. In fact, I heard they use how much to feed children the other day, and there was no evidence that it was properly spent. So this is where the problem is, plugging it from the roots and holding people accountable when they do steal. Nothing has been done to show that we're serious. In China, you'll be hanged. In, oh, in well, Russia, because it, it, it looks like there are untouchables. Yeah. And so when the untouchables are behind the looting, then you can elongate their cases sure. in court until you think the people have forgotten and then you just, you know, just give them a slap on the wrist and then they go and away. The, the government always remembers to remind us of China when they're talking about clapping down on the freedoms of the people, like the internet yeah, and things. Yeah, but they don't They remember. never remember how they handled corruption of mm. government personnel. And then I remember <laughs> under Minister um, Obi Ezekwesili, we had um, due diligence. I wonder Madame what due happened. Process. Due process. Yeah. We used Obviously, to call her yeah, Madam right. Due Process. Due process. Yeah. I wonder what happened mm -hmm. to you know due process in our procurement in government now. Because it's trying to do the needful, doing the needful now. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? That means corruption. Wow. You understand? Do so we've gone for. from due diligence to doing Dude. the needful. <laughs> needful, yes. <laughs> you know, one of the former ministers Hello. said that. I'm sure you know who said that. When she said we we'll do the needful. Okay. And that was for me, code word for corruption. Thank you. Um, well, Rukabe is up next after the break. Today I'm asking the COVID vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine, to be trusted or not. On Tuesday, December 8, a lady made history, 90-year-old Margaret Keenan of Coventry in the United Kingdom became the first person in the world to be given the Pfizer COVID-19 job as part of a mass vaccination program. Millions more are planned to be vaccinated. And indeed, the UK government has ordered 40 million doses of this same vaccine. And so there you have it. We have a vaccine. And as uh, this week, <laughs> it has been rolled out in many, many countries, including the United States and in Canada, where I'm, I'm speaking to you from. So we know from science that the testing and vaccination are the one-two punch to end this pandemic. And Americans and Canadians, we have been promised that by June 2021, um, according to our public health officials, we will have everyone vaccinated who wants to take the vaccine. So which way Nigeria? Any sign of the vaccine yet? Just yesterday, our minister came on to say that they're still talking about which vaccine to get and whatnot, and nothing concrete has been discussed. If it works as expected, tests have shown 95% efficacy, and then the days of COVID are indeed numbered, and there is indeed light at the end of the tunnel. The metaphoric expression, light at the end of the tunnel, is apt considering the dark shadow of COVID has cast over our lives in the last few months. But how do we know that this light is not a speeding train bridging down the tunnel to crash into everyone? The other day, someone posted below a meme in my WhatsApp group, um, 40 years with a lot of research for HIV, no vaccine. 100 years worth of research for cancer, no vaccine. 100 years worth of research for malaria, no vaccine. 100 years worth of research for the common cold, where is the vaccine? Now you want me to believe a vaccine for COVID is available after just a few months? Haba, no vaccine for me. Among the hundreds of ridiculous conspiracy theories out there, there are a few that are worth mentioning. Novel coronavirus was planted to build the 5G network. The COVID vaccine will alter a person's DNA. 
Mr. Gates, former Microsoft CEO, will launch human implantable capsules that become digital certificates, which can show who has been tested for the coronavirus, who has been vaccinated against it, and gather more information about you. Number four, COVID is not worse than the flu. I don't take the flu vaccine, so no reason to take the COVID vaccine. Such myths and misinformation have led to a lot of people to refuse to even consider taking the vaccine. So to date, Nigeria has not released any concrete plan, logistics, or in fact, the government, how they want to acquire the vaccine. Like I said, they keep talking, they're talking to this and this and that, but nothing concrete. And we know that the vaccine, at least one particular type, needs very deep freeze cold chain, and there's not a single deep cold chain of minus 80 degrees centigrade in Nigeria, not one. So other countries have ordered 10 billion doses against COVID um, from AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Biotech, Moderna, and even Gamalaya by, um, by all of them. And we haven't mentioned what we, what we have, um, have pre-ordered. Um, I can tell you, for example, 700 million doses have been ordered by the um, United States and the European Union, and even India ordered 500 million doses. And in Africa, Egypt um, ordered 30 million doses. So how many million doses has Nigeria ordered? We haven't got any concrete thing till now. Now, I focus it, therefore, is for the Nigerian government to copy the gold standards seen elsewhere in our world, and for the NCDC to inspire confidence by widely publicizing the gains of vaccinations and by top government officials like our elderly, sometimes sickly president, volunteering along with frontline workers as the first in line to take the job to make Nigerians know that it's safe and indeed protect us against this deadly virus. Thanks, Tukewe. You've made an example of an elderly sitting president to take the job first. That would be fantastic. You <laughs> should lead by example. After all, the measure of leadership is influence. Yes. Nothing less, nothing more. Mm. So the president should lead uh, by uh, taking the job first. It's Ruke well, she said it. My fear is that uh, in Nigeria, the government have no strategy to, to preserve the people and keep them away from hunger and poverty, Ew. sickness and diseases. They have not been able to do that. Now, coronavirus is a higher dimension of a danger, okay? As we speak, there is no strategy for now because we're only told that uh, the federal government will acquire the vaccines. How will it be distributed in a country where we have uh, tribal issues, you have to know man, you have to uh, sort yourself, pay, through, pay your way through mm -hmm. to get yourself treated and all that. How exactly are we going to have this distributed? What is the strategy? What are the measures being put in place for <laughs> the proper distribution of these drugs? We don't know anything let, yet. Let, let's take Jumo. Okay. Ever okay. since talking like we are in a hurry to take the vaccine. <laughs> we are not. <laughs> That's another part of the story. So, why are you people are queuing up? <laughs> we are standing at the back. No, but the vaccine is important. Um, we agree with you. Go and take it first. <laughs> well, I'm on, what do you think? <laughs> Oh, well, I, I think we can just... incentivize some people to take well, it. If we say we're well, giving well, out well, money, let's, let's a lot of people. Well, 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 when you talk about a population of 200 million people, um, the views will not be the same. So there are Nigerians who are ready today to take the vaccine if the vaccine is actually yes. uh, available. And as a matter of fact, we won't be able to provide 200 million vials of the vaccine. So if it's only 20, what is important is the plan. The priorities, who are they on the priority list? Elderly. And how are we, because for now, one of the vaccines requires certain unusual temperatures to preserve them. Yes. Do we have the facility with those tem temperatures? Those, those are some of the issues we need to deal with before even talking about getting the vaccine. If we get the vaccine today, it will go to waste. Well, the reality. Uh, well, my, my solution is to allow the president, his ministers, the National Assembly, all our elderly. Who are take not the sons of the generation? Let them just take the vaccine. <laughs> they, they take but, but it it that, it, it lead by example. <laughs> it appears that you are, you are more scared of the vaccine than the coronavirus. Exactly. Oh, it constitutes the uh, risk. 
Okay. Group, high risk group. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so they, they should lead by example. That's all. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm up next after, after the break. Yeah. It's time to fix Nigeria's politics. Well, for a while, I've bemoaned the sorry state of governance in this nation. I've told the story of our national problems and challenges for weeks here. And just when you think you've seen it all, one wakes up to another foolish policy. How should one explain the decision to biometrically register about 50 million people in two weeks in the middle of a pandemic and over the holidays? <laughs> to paraphrase Nonso Obikili on Twitter, he says, and I quote, it's an act of economic self-sabotage and an attempt to destroy the telecom sector that has grown steadily in the last five years. Isn't this also a way to start the year in chaos? How do you do two weeks to biometrically, you know, register people? Well, today I'm sharing the story of a solution. One of the outstanding ones Nigerian citizens are coming up with in order to create a country worth living for themselves and their unborn. Former presidential candidate and co-convener, Bring Back Our Girls, Dr. Obi Izekwesili launched hashtag fix politics in november 2020 it parades many bright brains in nigeria from all sectors but you know what excites me most about the initiative is its school of politics policy and governance in collaboration with herty school of governance in germany this to me is critical to transforming the political ecosystem and governance at all levels in nigeria it's like saying enough is enough if you want to have a stake, then come for knowledge. Now, the school is a world-class virtual academic education initiative. It offers the 21st century type disruptive thinking leadership program. It's looking to train 5,000 new political leaders in five years. The school is technologically enabled and promises a six-month, 70%, 30% mix of virtual and physical classroom curriculum. And I'm one of the pilot team. We've been receiving lectures, you know, and sessions on a range of topics related to politics. I can tell you it's exciting. It's designed to transform the political system in Nigeria for good governance, for good. It answers the critical question on how to become 21st century politicians with character, competence, and capacity. It seeks to elevate the office of the citizen. Let me share my experience with you. Three quick takes. First, it offers an unconventional approach to learning about politics, policy, and governance. I mean, we learned how the, you know, the difference between the parliamentary and the presidential system and the functions of a party, a political party, and many more. Now, you can approach your career armed with strategy and a combination of street uh, wisdom and knowledge with formal knowledge in politics and policy making. It is analytically and empirically relevant to solving our peculiar complex development problems. Secondly, it prepares you to run for elective offices at state and federal levels in legislative and executive offices. So that starting from 2023, the electorate can have top quality choices of candidates. Thirdly, if you have a commitment to public service, this is a transformative opportunity. It seeks to equip you with intellectual and professional capability to solve critical po political policy and governance challenges facing Nigeria. If you seek and desire to be part of the solution, then join this team. We shouldn't be complaining all the time. Hashtag Fix Politics is an enabler to produce a new political leadership class and support individuals on their way to becoming political leaders irrespective of their political parties. The first cohort will commence in January. Will I be there? Will you be there? It's time to actively fix Nigeria's politics. You know, it's funny how I never um, anticipated that I would become as political as I have become in the last um, seven years. Because as a journalist, all I wanted to do was report, present, and do my business on the side and just enjoy my life as a Nigerian. But when everything that happens in government and through governance, you know, enables your life, encourages good welfareism, or inhibits your livelihood, you become an activist. 
and therefore every Nigerian has to be actively involved in politics from doing our own parts as individuals. If you work in the public system or the private system, ensuring that you're not cheating the next person, you're not stealing from them because it's the um, microcosm of the bigger society that we are in terms of we are the ones who eventually become government. They don't come from Ghana or Togo, you know. So if we fix ourselves, we can then fix politics because then I'm not going to be going into political office to enrich myself and my family. It will be really to serve. But what we have now, and a lot of people say it's not our fault, is how Nigeria was amalgamated. It wasn't amalgamated to succeed. If that is true, we need to sit together and say, how do we move the country forward with yeah. all of us participating, not you and I deciding for everyone else. Right. Yes, I think this, this advocacy is very critical. Uh, critical in the sense that it, it is like the, the fulcrum of our social economic existence. And uh, it's one that every one of us, because every man is political. Politics is embedded in man uh, from creation. Mm. So it, it, we have come to a point where everyone must come up. Because if you look at what is happening, I am 40 years as I speak. I don't know what good governance is. Ew. I've never seen good governance since I was born. I shouldn't <laughs> die like this. No, I, 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 this is protest. This is protest. I, I, I don't know what good governance is. The only time I saw what we are, was when I read in government textbook that this is how a country should be managed and this is the kind of political system you should have. What I've never it? seen it before. It will, so it will, imagine it, dying it, like this. It will, it will happen in this your lifetime. Yeah. You know, I, I, I like the structured <laughs> approach that uh, Obi is putting into this uh, for people who are now showing interest mm -hmm. to get more involved and understand that particular space. Because another thing that scares people away is the fact that they don't understand the space. And if you don't understand something, the tendency is to, to yes, just hands up. And we need to extend that even into, into the education space. I attended a secondary school where we have student representative council, mm. where they were, we appoint speakers, where our prefect campaign to be elected, there is a speech day. You know, so as a, as, a, as a Form 1 student, I was representing my Form 1 on that student representative council in secondary right. school. Yeah. Now, whatever took all of that away, I don't know. Yeah. And it's going to a federal so government let's, school. Let's take Ruki away. Yes. Well, I went to federal government school because I recognize what you were saying. But the truth is, everything starts with education. When you put the right seeds inside the minds of a child, they will, they will grow very good products. So it's very, really obvious to me that we really haven't gotten it right from inception. Our, our school system is, is really not adequate at the moment, where the public sector, um, public schools, if you will, are not properly funded. So people send their children to private schools and whatever agenda it is. We, we had this amalgamation she talked about or well, everybody in Nigeria came to those schools. They put quarters for the North and the East and all that with the quarters for the North um, being lower. But we learned to leave, leave as brothers. Even some of my closest friends today are we'll from learn... the North and have never been to the North. Yeah, in... Rukia, we will learn to live as brothers. That will be your yeah. punchline uh, as we move on. <laughs> right. <laughs> we, we did, we did. And the truth is, we, we're not really living like that now. There's so many interests, there's so much divide, be it um, religion, um, be it um, tribalism, all, you know, right. and all sorts of divide. And so we're not acting in, in love anymore. Well, our advocacy will be incomplete without your contributions as we read through your comments on our social media platforms. Demila De Alamudu says on our last advocacy, Nigerians need reorientation of mindset for nation building, starting from our primary education, family units, and from grassroots. And we Nigerian citizens, legislative, judiciary, and executive arms of government must agree to put in effective systems of government and policies that can build a nation regardless of political parties. Also, Julius Owoye says, ask yourself how many languages in Europe and how many countries in Europe that is what should be as well applicable in order to solve Nigeria's endemic problems from its inception. We thank you, Timla Dialamudu and Julia Zouye, for your comments. Do continue to participate with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag TheAdvocateNG, 
or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, you can go to plustvafrica.com um, slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Evans is back from his visit to Rabai. He's advocating for the protection of the Nigerian woman. Evans had better get this right. <laughs> Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What well, I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. A fortnight ago, I visited Rabbi, and by providence, a conversation ensued about why women are gradually becoming an endangered species in our communities, stuck in the Clevoyan metrics of slut shaming in a more prone society like Nigeria as they face fierce existential threats. I believe this conversation is critical, so I have made it my advocacy for this week, protecting the Nigerian woman. The world is simply filled with diverse stories of gender-based violence, sexual abuse, social conflict. We are inundated with the gory reality that the world is challenged. In the face of every challenge in human history, in times of war, economic distress, pandemic, displacement occasioned by insurgencies, and the failure of governance, Women are often the worst hits in the social violence chain. Armed conflict in Africa have seen more women raped and children defiled than any other incident in the world. Violence unleashed against women and children during this time accounts for the world's biggest challenge. Why is the world struggle to contain the increasing scale of violence, economic conflict in larger parts of the world have instigated more violence against women like never before. In Nigeria, children are being abducted from schools, marriages are going down the drain, and there are no particular strategy or strategic remedies in the scheme of things. In recent times, women are resorting to self-help as the last option among other things as a way of protesting against the ugly trend. So the aforesaid explain why women are constantly stabbing their male counterparts. Uh, the use of violence to contain violence will bring us all to a halt. And in the face of a breakdown of law and order, more women will be put into worse violent condition. Why I do not endorse violence from any gender? I will advocate, therefore, that men and women must be conscious of this menace and get involved in the crusade to eliminate all kinds of violence against women. I am not unmindful of the obvious fact that abuse and extreme violence is high amongst women as it could be found everywhere else. The propellant of these vices are not gender-based anymore. A survey has it that in same-sex relationship, mostly of the lesbian contraption, studies have seen more abuse and extreme violence among women. This is not to say that men are exculpated. Men contribute hugely 
to the record, and so we must face it. We must stand in between the gap and reshape the instigators of this social conflict, develop a new social order that will leave us with the truth that every man is a biological compartment of a woman, that violence against women may force humanity into extinction, that man is a constituent agent of a natural principle called the woman, that the deliberate twist of this natural order explains why sociology has sunk miserably. Every woman should be protected. Protect the woman around you. She is the future of the human race in the value chain of civilization, industrialization, and productivity. The woman must be allowed to aspire to her full potentials, where she comparatively have a polity to live in. And if that polity must have any meaning at all, it must be that the culture that represses women and their voices must be expunged from our social totem. Pledge today to protect the Nigerian woman around you. And in so doing, we will have preserved and protected the world. I shall go to Rabbi again. <laughs> yes, I love this oh, advocacy. Wow. Evans of president. <laughs> yes. So this, the women will vote. Evans of president. <laughs> yes, yes. This is my favorite topic, so jumping. Women, it's all about us. The truth is, a woman's rights is actually human rights. And Evans captured that beautifully, that women and men are intertwined. And in our country, in Nigeria today, we still don't have equal rights for women. All over the world, we talk about rights for women. And women are real victims in any um, violent situation. I'm talking, like you said, um, in, in wars, in, um, in conflicts. You see that women really bear the brunt of it. And a woman is actually the first teacher of, of a child. And so women will raise um, both females and males. And so a woman that is protected and has adequate resources will give the best for, for, the, uh, for the nation, for the generation. And so I can't get more excited about this topic uh, as a female politician in Nigeria where we are being uh, marginalized every day and um, <laughs> our patriarchal society that doesn't give women enough um, quotas or voice. I've talked about this on this advocacy so many times, how we can make things better to represent women so that the woman will actually have a rightful place in society. Right. We, okay. we are really, a, we are really, what's it called? Um, What's it called? Where we are at the point of almost extinction if we don't no, do this. No, you're not through extinction. <laughs> you are okay, everywhere. Yeah, let's, let's, let's hear from Golaho. <laughs> no, you're not talking here, Jimoke. Let's hear from Golaho. You, you know, the, this, this issue of inequality with women has a very long history. And it developed in the early ages when physical strength was what drives survivors. So the men are physically stronger generally. So in the hunter-gatherer days, they took, they took the fall. Now, in today's age, what we have is a system that is driven more by capacity, the mental mm -hmm. uh, capacity, no longer the physical capacity, strength. any longer. Yeah. So the raw strength has taken a bastard for the brain. Now, when it comes to brain, there is no difference in the capacity of a woman or a man to develop or to use the brain. What I mean, is, the what, world. What, what, what I women want to have quickly more chip in. Uh, what yeah, I want to it's not biological. Chip in <laughs> because of time, what I want to quickly chip in is what Evan said about same sex um, relationships and marriages and the fact that there is more violence amongst the, the women in same sex relationship. I'd like, that's something I'd like to tease further. How, how, generalized is that? Is it that there is more violence in a same-sex relationship involving women than the heterosexual one? You have started, kick-started that, um, and I'm going to you know, check it. that out. Yeah. Okay, okay, to protect the Nigerian woman is actually the um, forte of the Nigerian woman, because it is women who are the enablers of patriarchy. Right, you're right. This is what I suffered in my husband's house. I had 11 children, 
She just only had three. Why is she shouting? What's there? Oh, they shaved my own head, though. She must shave her head. Uh, look at what I was talking about women being marginalized in politics. When Sarah Jubri was coming out every day, how many women voted her? You people that refuse to support yourselves. <laughs> so until women come together, because again, we have the numbers. If we came together and said, oh, we're going to um, drop on 1,000 naira, we're going to form our own political party. The Which next I am for president that. is, is a woman. It won't work. We we'll, we'll chuck out Balaho and Evans. No, nah, I will come in sketch <laughs> now. That's very easy. Let me, let me, let me, let me, I will shave and boys. come in sketch. No, you can't add <laughs> boys. <laughs> okay, you have to. The numbers improved on this last election. Let me tell you. Yeah, I know. I did your voice. We are going home. We have more women. But still, it wasn't enough. Now, I want to talk about the the Benway State case that just happened, where a, a man had to beat the woman physically to a point of. Uh, Blood oh, and all that. that, that popular so uh, what I'm saying is that beating a woman is exposing a man's wretchedness because it is practically wrong for a man to physically, emotionally, or whatsoever unleash okay, so that stone yes. age passion yes, that, on, on, the woman. on the woman. It is right. wrong, and I think men should take a clue from this so and desist I, I from celebrate this. you. I yes. celebrate you. Thank you. <laughs> I celebrate you. Okay. I'm up next right after the break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Did you know that Nigeria budgets to pay rent for Aso Villa yearly? Who is our landlord? Who is in Aso Rock? The presidential villa was built with taxpayers' money, but we pay rent to an unknown landlord. We've been asking this question for years. Maybe we'll get an answer before the 2021 budget is finally passed. But now, our landlady, the wife of the president, has relocated to Dubai. Will the president finally agree that Nigeria is no longer safe? But what will Alaji Mohammed, Nigeria's Minister of Information, say this time? I know he reacts quickly to fake news. Will he tell us this is just a figment of our imaginations too? The APC youth have thrown in the towel. They claim they can no longer defend this government, particularly with President Buhari choosing to visit his cattle rather than families of abducted schoolboys in Kankara, Katsina, while he's on a private visit to Katsina himself. I assumed going home on a private visit was to avoid being embarrassed by the National Assembly that had invited the president to answer questions on the state of insecurity across the country. But to be in Katsina and not go to commiserate with the governor and families whose children were abducted is morally unacceptable for the father of the nation. His predecessor, who he criticizes so much for insecurity, would at least show up, show face, and make promises. And patience Jonathan never absconded. Is this a sign that Nigeria is definitely more insecure than it was under President Jonathan. If the first family is absconding and relegating responsibility, who is in Asso Rock then? Where will Nigerian citizens run to if the president's family aren't safe in the country with the security apparatus at their beck and call? My advocacy today is to agree with Governor Shei Makinde of Oyo State that what Nigeria needs is security and restructuring rather than keep borrowing money from everywhere, even the pensions fund as suggested by Governor Fayemi of Ikiti State, to sustain states that are no longer economically viable under our present arrangement. Nigeria needs to sell us rock and let everyone go back to their regions to seek prosperity and security of lives based on each region's resources and potentials. Nigerian lives have deteriorated in the last 21 years. We can't keep doing the same thing. Do you agree we should sell us a rock? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I disagree. I like that. <laughs> uh, the, and government should be no, if you have somebody total. like Evans at 40 who has not seen good, good governance, mm. then yes. why do we have... In 40 years. In 40 years. It's the building, Except the what problem. He read in, 
I don't think that the building is the problem. The Yoruba should say, No, but truly, the American president pays for his rent in white in the White House. Yes. No, he pays to the state. He pays to the state. Yeah. Do we do the same thing here? No. Since we're no. no. the presidential the system. Oh. Who is, Our own landlord, we don't know. Who we don't the know who the landlord is. Who is, who is the landlord? I, 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 I am I think, not sure I've seen. I mean, I've done I, I extensive work on the Nigerian as budget. Let's, and I'm not sure I've seen rent as an item on that list. Yeah, that is have you no, seen but, but there's presidential. I've done I've done an analysis of at least for eight or nine years of Nigerian budget. I've seen it so twice. I'm checking, yeah. I, I've, so, I've seen it twice. Well, oh, there's rent. Let, there's let me, rent. Let me no let me now talk on the, well, no some of the other issues that were mentioned. Right, you see, right. when I get confused about certain issues, I try to personalize it to make sense out of it. Okay. So when I heard that the president went to see his cattle, mm. I have a 14-year-old boy too. And I'm asking myself, oh, he could have been in that school. Mm -hmm. So if he is part, God forbid, if he's part of the people that got Kidnapped. Will I go to check cattle? In that. So, and, and that brought it clearly to my face that uh, something is seriously, seriously, seriously wrong. 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 Yeah. This is what we can do. Let us deregulate Asso Rock. Like she said. <laughs> uh, okay. We can we can we can decentralize it. Let's move back to our regions, our Correct. various states. Yeah. Let's yeah. develop the governance, the governance from native intelligence and from the root. And then let's contribute to whatever it is left of the center. Therefore, we we'll have a prosperous future where to stand on. Like in my place, there's no federal government presence in Ndoka Okwanela. Well, you have a jail <laughs> as we speak. They have a prison. The only thing we have is a federal prison that was built before 1960. And this is terrible. <laughs> Right, okay, well, let's take you. Let's, what's your take? The funny thing is, in Canada, we have provinces, and there's no central anything. And each province self-auto-regulates. <clears throat> we create our own income. For example, I'm a physician in Toronto. I'm also a physician in Saskatchewan. I have two separate licenses, two, two separate boards. So each state, if you will, we will call province, generates their own income for themselves. And there's no central government where we're paying anything to. Hmm. We do pay taxes. Um, to the central government. Yeah, there are federal taxes you must, in Canada. You must still pay your state taxes. So bottom line is, our government in Nigeria is not working for us. It's, it's too large, and people are too di um, divided across the country. And you cannot look after me in Ugweru from Abuja. It's not sure. possible. How would you know what my problems are? True. You understand? So this is where the problem is. We need to restructure our government. The style that we're doing is not working for us. Yeah, I agree. Right. Okay, for me, um, first of all, how do you even plan to take away more than 300 children, students from school? Mm. And our security apparatus, as it is, could not do intelligence work, did not get to know. Mm. And then more than a week after, we've been doing talk shops Talking, 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 governor of the casino state talking, police not talking, um, the military not talking. Nothing is going on. You're just talking. No mm. action that this is what we have done. And that's what I'm asking the government today on the show. What have you done to recover these children? So we Treasure, that American that was taken from the Niger to Nigeria, was it not you that talked about it last time, Bola? Yeah. How long did it take to recover the American? They knew exactly his location. One person. Correct. So you take 300 people and nobody can see anything. Mm. So does that make any so sense? It definitely says to us that, that Nigeria, Nigeria is not working. That the of the federal Nigeria government is not being them. governed. That's yeah. what it means. No. It's an ungoverned space. Yeah. Who is in Asuro? It's an ungoverned space. It's not even about who is in Asuro, but who is in charge. Who is in charge? Who is in charge? is the house of, you know. It's just, just a building. Yeah. It, it, that's just a building. You know, to be honest, really, it's just a building. Really but who is in charge? Who is giving the orders? It is not just about, oh, how bad, how sad. Oh, we will work to bring the children. What have you we'll done? We will leave no stone unturned. The song unturned. is, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> the president <laughs> condemned. He's in shock. The president is in Imagine. shock. How can you take 300 children <laughs> while I'm in Katsina and all my security apparatus is around here? No one saw anything. It is it's well sad. with us. Okay.
it is time to draw the curtains on this week's episode of The Advocates. However, The Advocates continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. You can also catch up with previous broadcasts on plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time, same station. Please keep advocating for a better Nigeria. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, well, yeah. Greet them in Canada. Oh. <laughs> five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.